Hello, welcome lead Patrick McKinney here on the Metal Mixtape in Ashland and around the world. What is up, my brother? Chilling. How you doing, man? Dude, I'm doing great, dude. I'm not going to lie, dude. I, I got the goosies, dude. I'm so excited that you made time tonight to do the interview. Um, I've been listening to you for over a decade now, and uh, you're a huge inspiration. Thank you so much for being on the show, dude. And I, I was not aware that your birthday is at midnight, right? <laughs> yeah. Dude. Yeah, it is. Um... <laughs> But uh, I, I'm stoked to, you know, be on the show. I saw that you uh, did some cool promotion stuff for it, and I uh, seems like you have a cool thing going on, and so I didn't want to. Didn't want to miss it. <laughs> hey, man. Well, you know what? I completely appreciate it. And, you know, I, I follow all of your stuff, dude. You know, I follow your solo stuff. I love the song uh, A Clock Without a Craftsman. I love all the, everything you do, man. I love I love all the guitars you come out with. And uh, I just appreciate you making time, especially, you know, with uh, all the, the the quarantine, the corona stuff happening. So, um, so first of all, for all the listeners out there in Ashland, Medford, and around the world, we're talking to Lee Patrick McKinney from Born of Osiris. So, man, um, what you been up to during this whole uh, quarantine thing and this whole downtime before we get into the awesome music? Well, I feel like we're kind of lucky because uh, a lot of people are like, oh, it's a perfect time to write a bunch of music. And I'm usually that guy, you know, every day, um, you know, kind of a nine to five situation, just writing in the studio. For me, I haven't like found a ton of inspiration just being locked inside. Yeah. So on the bright side, we're finishing the new Born with Cyrus record and I just finished my new solo album. And so like I'm mm -hmm. doing mixes and masters uh, and going back and forth and we're making the artwork and the song titles and the album title and everything like that. And so it's been nice because we've had those things going on and it's exciting to, uh, you know, have something be productive, even if it's not necessarily with writing new music, but um, so it's an exciting time listening to mixes. Uh, coming up with titles and album covers and all that stuff. So, um, I know with, um, you know, the whole quarantine, the coronavirus, um, how are you guys able to still, like, collab and get all, like, the tracks recorded and all the artwork? Are you guys, do you guys all live, like, in the same area? Or is it just, like, a bunch of emails sending back and forth and tracks? Uh, well, we grew up in Chicago, all of us together, like, down the street from each other. Um, oh, but awesome. nowadays we're spread out, so... Uh, a couple in Chicago. I'm in Dallas, Texas. Uh, our new guitar player um, is in Arizona. Um, and we had one in California. He just moved back to Chicago. But uh, we're, now we're spread out. And so as far as the virus goes, um, all the writing and recording was done before the struck. So um, we haven't needed to see each other since. Um, and then as far as my solo record, it's just me and... Um, I'm mixing and mastering it, so it's kind of another fortunate thing that I haven't needed to, uh, you know, wait on not being able to see him on anything. Yeah, and dude, that's that's awesome. And I bet um, being around like in the industry and and uh, having to record, um, you've recorded so many albums. I bet uh, doing it yourself, you know, a bunch of in interesting tricks. Yeah, and and so starting with the discovery, which I forget what year that was, but it was a while. Uh, ago. Two thousand eleven. Beautiful, yeah. So about nine years ago is when I started really like having a hand in the albums. So that one, I started editing the guitars. That was like the first little bit. Um, and then the next one, I tracked uh, the bass and the guitars. And then, uh, you know, it just kind of led from there. And then the simulation that came out, I tracked everything besides vocals. So each like year that goes by, I take on more uh, roles in the, in the studio just as I learn more. So you're right, it is because of meeting people that along the way. It uh, you know, kind of gives me more confidence. And then, and then this, this album, that my solo record, the second one that's coming out this year, this is the first like full on um, beginning to end. I did every single thing, mixed, mastered everything. So it's a big step. It's a, it's a step forward in my career. And it's exciting. That's awesome, man. Um, so, so when you're creating your solo album, um, opposed to like uh, Born of Osiris material, um, what kind of direction are you taking? Like when you're writing your solo album, is it, is it? Because like when, when I listen, when I watch your stuff, it's like all this beautiful guitar work that uh, guitar work that you're doing. But is it like a completely different mindset that you have to like switch in your head? Yeah, there's, I'd say there's a couple main differences. One is that the main thing is like in Born. I know, like, people talk about, like, the guitar solos and stuff like that and the lead work, but, uh, you know, one thing I have to think about is that we have vocals that are 
are really the lead of any song they're going to be a part of. And yeah. not only that, for Born of Osiris, we have two vocalists. Like we have Joe, our keyboard player, also does vocals. So yep. it's tough to. One thing you have to be consciously thinking about when you're writing a Born of Osiris song is, as much as it's tempting to go crazy on a guitar, yeah, you have to leave room for a top layer of vocals that you don't know what it's going to sound like <clears> when you're writing a song. You know <clears> what I mean? So yeah. We're writing these patterns and these, you know, these offbeat things, and these, we're creating these rhythms with the band. And then all of a sudden, you don't know. In the end, there's going to be all these new rhythms that are actually the the vocals, potentially to most people, the most important part. Um, so it's a trip. So in the solo world, like I don't have to worry about that. I can take up as much space as I want, or as, <laughs> as I want, and I don't have to think about, you know, busying up a song. No, so that's one part. And yep. then the other is like with Born. I think people will notice if you know our catalog that there's a lot of melodic stuff. So it's like there's tons of melodies. So I think in the solo world, it's like just doing the solo, the melodic stuff. I don't need to be heavy. I get that. I get those rocks off with Born, and uh, I think naturally I just have a heavy side of me. So I think that people still find there's still heavy moments, and there will be in anything I ever create. Yeah. Um, but I don't necessarily think like it's a first a metal record. I guess if you had to say so, then. Yeah, you no. call it a metal record, but uh, mm-hmm. it's not the intention. I, those songs start on piano and acoustic guitar half the time with a progression, and then I just start writing melodies over it. Whereas Born, sometimes I'll start with a crazy drum part and put guitar to that, or it's, so it's a whole different process of creating. So yeah, no, I noticed with um, with the song "A Clock Without a Crossman" that you had a saxophone player playing with you. Yeah. So, so when you record like uh, your solo album and you have like all these ideas, are you always looking like for musicians to collab with? So to be honest, no. I um, I do. I, I play like a, I'll, I mean, I write keyboards for one of my guitars, drums. That's awesome. I would have never known that. <laughs> every song, but for example, like Cameron, our drummer, is also a songwriter. So when he writes something, he writes the guitar parts. Okay. But for me, when I'm writing something, I write his drum parts. Obviously, we. I'm just talking demo purposes. So later on, you know, I'll tweak the guitar parts and he doesn't play exactly what I wrote on the drum program. You know what I mean? Because he's a real person. He's going to make it 80 times better. I'm just saying for yep. demo purposes, when I make something, I'll do all the instruments. So with, uh, with the solo thing, it's kind of fun because I enjoy that. And he's the only cook in the kitchen and he can really just, like I enjoy playing bass on these records. I mean, I play bass on a lot of Born records too, but um, I enjoy being the person who's playing all the instruments. It's just really, it feels like an accomplishment to me. <laughs> However, saxophone, I just can't do. Yeah, and, uh, yeah, I dig it. I grew up like listening to the Mars Volta, and then when I hooked up with, uh, Bros, the keyboard, uh, uh, sorry, the Adrian who plays saxophone yep. in Mars Volta, and found out that he wanted to jam, I was like, okay, of the, course, be on everything. And the saxophone thing comes from like, like the midnight and like electronic. Uh, stuff that i like to listen to and 80s stuff and yeah dude, yeah dude that's so awesome dude i um by the way i love the mars volta dude and i love cedric and omar rodriguez lopez and i got to see them open for the chili peppers and system of a down and they're just chaotic like 13 wow. 13 band members on the stage and and cedric's like doing like this mic spin and, and omar rodriguez is like going like it's insane dude <laughs> that's so wild it's like uh, I don't think I ever got to see him live you know but it just even from uh, at the drive-in like as far back as they go I just remember growing up and just digging all that stuff and uh, with the first solo record that I did um, piano and saxophone to me are just like timeless instruments mm-hmm. and so that's they're heavy on there um, but the, who, the guy who mixed the record Infinite Mind yep. I ended up taking the, key, uh, the piano which is just natural grand piano and like putting a lot of effects on it. So you almost don't even notice how <laughs> prominent piano is in the songwriting. Yeah. On um, this one that I'm mixing and mastering, you'll hear a lot more piano in saxophone. Um, and so I like that. I just think it's something that is kind of timeless, either one of those instruments. And they come in waves. I feel like popularity, like saxophone, you know, I, I yeah. started doing it because I thought the band, The Midnight, yep. who's an electronic artist, mm-hmm. I thought it was so catchy. And I was like, <laughs> I have to do this in my music. Dude, and that's... then I did it in a metal song and heard that like, there's a, there's all these other bands doing it, and it's, I feel like it's you know it's a popular thing at times, but I didn't know. That's awesome, man. So I I, I know um we're short on time tonight, so I had a couple questions um 
uh, from my friend Trevor. He's in a band called the Enema Effect, but he's like a massive Born of Osiris fan. He owns. Uh, I think I've heard of his band. Yeah. He, oh, that's awesome, dude. I, I guarantee you made his day, dude. Yeah. Um. So yeah, he's uh, the guitar player for the Enema Effect, and uh, he uh, he gave me two questions to ask you, and I'm gonna ask okay. him like um like in his perspective, like um like if he's asking, he's like. Um, he says, as someone who is a guitarist in a band that is inspired by your work, how do you balance your songwriting between trying to express your uh, influence influences, but also trying to maintain your own original sound? So when it comes to Born of Osiris, it's like, uh, to be honest, like, I don't listen to a lot of metal at all. Yeah. Um, and so I feel like when I was younger, that's when I listened to metal. Like, you know, all the crazy stuff from like... 12 years ago is what like original like six influenced me like old faceless like you know the sugar kind of stuff but uh but so i feel like it ingrained like technical metal inside of me and and then also like we grew up in chicago with vale of maya and after the burial just north of us so like our little midwest scene was boo vale and atv and you could see us for free every friday because we we're just best friends that grew up that way before Samarian records before all that shit so that was kind of like we're kind of feeding off each other and doing this metal sound. So that's where the influence like started. And then as far as like being my own thing now and born being our own thing, like I think the reason that people talk about the melodies and you mentioned the word like beautiful this, and I appreciate that. the finest compliment. Um, I think it's because I listen to like just like pop and, and rock and like, I don't really listen to metal. And so when I listen to like melodic music, whether it's electronic or, pop or like anything I'm melody driven and so I think that uh, naturally I do metal but the influences are not coming from that world at all so I think that makes the music different absolutely not even intentionally but that's what I would say bro absolutely man it's like um, you know people think uh, they know you for cooking steak but you actually cook all these other cuisines that 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 uh, that add an accent to your steak cooking yeah, here's what I would say to, to best describe okay. an issue that I find with people trying to write music that are only listening to the metal world. Here's the thing. You can never be ahead of the curve when you're relying on the curve to feed you what's coming next. Like, you can't be ahead of it ever if you're being fed from it. Damn. So that, my that makes any sense. <laughs> Bro, no, hey, that makes complete sense, dude. So um, I'm going to ask uh, one more question of his, then I'm going to ask one more. So that way we can uh, let you go on your awesome birthday. So here, uh, here's his second question. He's all, as someone who owns your whole discography and really enjoyed um, uh, the trajectory of your growth as a band, what is next for uh, Born of Osiris? Um, so oh, a lot of cool things. So I feel like when it comes to our fan base, there's certain people that are like discovery diehards because they thought that... Uh, like the guitar solos are. Then I feel like as we got older, we wanted to do more simple, like uh, structure, not music in general, but structure, like verses and choruses. So I feel like the fan base has been kind of conflicted on what part of our history that is the best one. Yeah. Um, I think with this one, we finally came full circle on it. So this new record coming out has as many or more guitar solos as a discovery. However, um, has... Uh, you know, like heavier, sim- more simple mm-hmm. structure as well. But then we have like five minute songs, and also there's, there's like 14 songs on it too. So it's, wow. it's the longest record since the Discovery or longer again. So I think this is the one that everyone's going to be kind of like, no matter what part of our discography you prefer, I think this is going to be a unanimous, you know, hopefully one that everyone agrees is the best. And uh, a lot of it, I got to say, is Cameron, the drummer, and I have made this music since the beginning for over 10 years, and. uh now we have a new guitar player who has been playing bass for us, but he's an amazing songwriter. That's awesome. And uh, so he's been writing with us, and so now we have a third person like really submitting demos to the pile, and he works just as much and just as hard as the rest of us. So we have a lot more source material to, to work from. That's awesome, brother. All right, brother. So um, it was awesome interviewing. So I'm gonna throw you like a like a little wild card question. What are what are cool. what are three bands? that people who are huge fans of Born of Osiris wouldn't expect you to listen to? Like three artists that are not metal related, but are like um, three artists that you would say that are just like completely different. Okay, so the 1975 is one. They just came out with a song today, so that's out of my mind. Um, let's see. I'll just do through my, uh, 
my uh, iPod real quick. So nineteen seventy five, I'll say. Um, uh, looking to see Sam Smith, who's just like singer songwriter, piano, beautiful voice. Awesome. I uh, love all of his music. And then let's see. I'll do electric one. Uh, electronic. Uh, this artist Mizio, M I S S I O. I really dig. Uh, that's that's awesome brother well dude i i appreciate you so much for making some time for the metal mixtape i know it's your birthday tonight and by the way happy birthday uh be safe out there thank you and um hey uh, would you mind doing me one favor sure um would you say uh um this is the lee patrick mckinney and you're listening to the metal mixtape yep this is lee patrick mckinney and you're listening to the metal mixtape Hey, thank you so much for making time, brother. Happy birthday, hey, and man. I can't um, wait to go home and listen to the interview and, and listen to more of your solo stuff. You have a wonderful night, brother. Beautiful. You too, man. Thank you. Bye. And that was Lee Patrick McKinney from Born of Osiris. That guy is awesome. That guy is cool. Huge happy birthday to you, my brother. I hope you have a good, wonderful night. And you're listening to the Metal Mixtape here on KSKQ. 89.5 Ashton, Oregon, 94.1 Medford, Oregon, streaming line on kskq.org.